welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny. So before we get into it, two things. Just before we get into this, three things actually. The first one is I haven't done a lip combo in quite a long time, so if I have lipstick on my teeth, I do apologize. No, I don't. I can't help it. <laughs> Number two, stress rash. Like, does anyone else manifest rash when they're super, super overwhelmed? I do it. It's weird. Uh, you know, I'm starting to incorporate an antihistamine into my daily routine. It just has to happen, but you know, it needs to heal. And while I could totally douse it in foundation, I'd rather it heal on a clean, sterile surface than to, than to have, you know, real life. Hashtag Mommy Fug Life. And the third thing is, for the entire video, I would like to enforce the safe zone filter. This is where we're allowed to freely communicate what we're feeling, what we purchased, why we purchased them, our thoughts and opinions without the fear of judgment. And that's mutual judgment, you know, an exchange of judgment. We're just not going to do that because it's the safe zone filter. Does that make sense? All right. If you guys have been here for a hot minute, you know that I've been here for a hot minute. It's been, uh, I don't know, uh, eight or nine years almost a decade. And here's the thing is about, I would say three or four years ago, I was like, you know what, makeup, you are exhausting and mama needs a break. And about three or four years ago, I stopped to find the joy in makeup. It felt a little overwhelming. It felt sometimes like a chore. I started to fall in love a lot with the way my naked face looked. And I still do enjoy my naked face. In fact, we put makeup on maybe two or three times a month. But when I tell you that I never thought I would find my way back, I really didn't think I was gonna find my way back. I thought I had outgrown my addiction to makeup. And no, I was just still just lying dormant for a little while. So recently, and I wonder what the trigger was. I'm pretty sure if I can think about it, like I'm pretty sure if I take a moment to kind of go back, God, this is horrendous. <laughs> If I take a moment to go back and I think about the times that I was playing with makeup most recently and what the trigger was to get me to love makeup again and play with it and swatch it, I think I could probably figure it out. But anyway, I'm digressing. And the point of this video is a haul. And I wanted to make sure that I was able to play with a few of these items, if not the majority of them, before I shared them with you, just so that uh, I could have some feedback to share. And if I haven't tried it and you have, I would love your feedback in the comment section below. So we did a little damage. Amazon, Ulta, Sephora, some stuff online. According to Wikipedia, Ulta Beauty Incorporated, formerly known as Ulta Salon. Did you guys like how the face came out? It's just automatic. I can't help it. I'm sorry for what my face did out loud. So yeah, I did kind of like a little haul here or there. I remember what, what the product was. We're going to start with Amazon. We're going to start with Amazon. All right. So the product that was, that sparked this like derailment of of curiosity of, you know, like when you, your brakes go out and you're just like, all right, just hanging on for the ride. So you guys have heard me talk about Jennifer Stano before. She was the one that taught me or rather opened my eyes to breast implant illness. She's an influencer. It's like mostly lifestyle, makeup, beauty, fashion, whatever. She just dabbles in everything and I find her extremely entertaining. Well, the other day she went on date night and part of her date night look was this eyeshadow. And so obviously I had to use her affiliate link and go on Amazon and buy it. And what it is, is this kit from House Laboratories, the Lady Gaga brand. And I'll post a get ready with me where I do this whole look. So if you guys wanted to do it or need inspiration, you can watch. And I mentioned in that video that I don't support celebrity brands or rather I don't go out of my way and I'm like, oh, cause I love Alicia Keys. I'm going to try her skincare. No, that doesn't entice me. It's not something that I find motivating, but what I do find motivating is selling a makeup brand only on Amazon. Like why? Is it that good that we don't have to swatch it in stores? And so it, it does pique my curiosity for sure. So anyway, she used this liquid glitter on her lid and her lips. And I was like, I need that in my life. So it comes in a kit like this. It's a cute little plastic bag. Uh, I think this would be a really cute like date night clutch, don't you think? You could put your phone, your lip gloss, and your keys or some change. It was super cute. Anyway, this set comes with 
three products. The product that's on my lid right now, which is called the Glam Attack All Over Liquid Shimmer Powder. So this is an extremely liquidy product. I am currently in the process of buying every single color. I didn't actually shake it, so I can't imagine how much more glittery it can get. So you shake it, the packaging looks like that. It is a liquid shadow. It is extremely watery. I mean, watery, like it would drip out of here if you turn it upside down. And so when you swatch it, I'm gonna put it right here. Do you see how watery it is? Like you could see that ridge of where it is, but it's layerable, it's super glittery, and as you apply it, it dries down and turns into a powder. So you kind of just let it hang out. Don't do a super thick layer because it'll never dry, but it turns into a powder. I mean, isn't it stunning? I should do a little, a little boop boop. A little boop boop action here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Look at how gorgeous that is. So that is the shade Crystal Remedy, and everything comes in like little crystally shapes, I think, maybe. I could be wrong. In this same kit are two other products that are on my lips right now. The lip liner, it's called the Rip Lip Liner Demi Matte in Arc. The shade is Arc, is that correct? Am I saying that properly? Yeah, the shade is Arc, and it's the Rip Lip Liner, Demi Matte Lip Liner. These are wooden pencils, so they need to be sharpened, which I appreciate because they don't dry out as fast, and you usually get a ton more product when it's a wooden pencil because you don't have all that mechanics involved. And I wanna say, and I said in this Get Ready With Me, I am almost confident in saying that this is a perfect dupe for MAC Soar just throwing that out there. The other product that comes in this kit is the Le Riot Gloss Ultra Shine Lip Gloss in the shade Mike Drop. Same packaging, matte black. It looks kind of like a crystal at the tip. And these glosses are very sticky. Um, not in a I never want to use you again in my life kind of way, but they are definitely really tacky. They remind me of um, MAC lip gloss. They remind me of MAC lip gloss. That's how sticky they are, but that's also how beautiful they are. That's what I have on my lips right now. In addition to an extra product that I bought, this does not come in a kit. This comes on its own, and it's the Le Monster Matte Lip Crayon in the shade Talk Dirty. And I wanted to get like a mauvey nude shade. I do love the shape of this pencil. It's almost like a bullet or a paintbrush, you know, like the tip of it. This is not a wooden pencil. This does have a twist up. And I applied this and I had a little bit of an instant regret just because it's a little too nude for the combo that I was going for. But I think it would be a great product to use just completely on its own. So it's a very beautiful peachy nude. But you could see like the theme over here is like a rose tone uh, mauve. And then this one over here is a pretty, pretty peachy nude, you know? So I got those products from House Laboratories on Amazon. So excited. I'm definitely super peaked and interested in seeing other shades of this liquid glitter shadow. I don't think I've ever played with a formula like this before because even e.l.f. and I think Milk Makeup have sort of liquid glitters, but they're not as watery. And so when you first watch it, you're like, well, this is gonna be a problem, you know? Like, this is gonna be a mess. But it dries and it turns into powder, like full-on powder. And here's the good thing, too, is I've swatched this before and it washes off with soap and water. It doesn't spread out and like get glitter everywhere where you need to use like an emollient makeup remover or double cleanse. No, it literally just washes off. So the glitter itself isn't sticky or clingy, which I really like. I think that for me is a big de determinant when it comes to a glittery product is if I know it's gonna get inside my eyes or it's gonna linger on my face or kind of fall down and get in my eyebrows and stuff. I can't say that would be a problem with this specific product. The last and final product that I got on Amazon was the Bioderma Sensibio Rich 
soothing cream. So if you guys have been here for the last few videos and the weekend vlogs, you know that I've become a huge fan of the Augustinus Bader Rich Cream. Now this is a $280 facial moisturizer. It does come with a lot of product, not a ton, but it makes my face feel a certain way. And while I'm not necessarily trying to find a dupe for it, I do want to find a suitable alternative for it so that anytime I mention it, I can tell you guys like this, this, and this is a suitable alternative for it. So doing some research and finding out what like the main components of that moisturizer were, I bought a few moisturizers that I'm going to talk about in this haul and maybe a follow up video if I really find something that I'm totally in love with. But this was a good recommendation in terms of the purpose of that moisturizer, which is insane, intense moisturizing. This is a moisturizer from Bioderma, which is that very popular micellar water brand. And I tried it and I liked it, but I can't say that it knocked my socks off or that it is a good dupe for the Augustinus Bader. With that said, I have been trying them very briefly, so purposefully but not in too much depth you know so I'll put it on I'm kind of going through phases where I'll apply it and I'll see do I like how it looks okay then I wake up the next morning I'm like do I do I like how my face feels and looks in the morning do I like the texture of it but that prolonged use where I could say yes definitely gives me the same results I don't have that opinion quite yet so I put a little bit here and it is a very emollient thick moisturizer but it doesn't have that creaminess that the Augustinus Bader moisturizer has. That one is like a heavy whipped oil almost. It's so rich and luxurious and this one just feels hydrating but no scent which I totally love. A lot of these that I'm going to show you have um, scent to them or fragrance and the Augustinus Bader one doesn't so I'm definitely looking for that component as, a, as an important component. So yeah, like it. It's good for people with dry skin. What's going on here with my hairs? All the moisturizers that I'm going to share will be uh, for, I would say, normal to dry skin because they have that really rich, luxurious, emollient, almost heaviness to them and heaviness in a positive way. I know that I know that might be misleading, but it's a good kind of heavy. Okay, let's move on to Ulta. And when I tell you that this haul was a little bit of a disaster, it really was. So I ordered online, some products were messed up, and so I just had to go back to the store and I had to exchange some things, some things they didn't have. It was like a whole thing. So this haul might be tainted with some sass, only because of the follow-up PTSD I got from the order. So on the topic of finding a dupe for that moisturizer I was telling you, this one was the one that most people were like, oh my God, this is literally heaven sent. It's the best moisturizer in the world. This is the only one that I could tell you confidently of all the ones I've purchased that I didn't like on first impression. Like I just, I can't get behind it. I'm not a fan. It's the Skin Iceland, pure cloud cream with arctic berries and peptides. So this is a moisturizer that is for very sensitive skin, irritated skin, dry and flaky skin. It's supposed to be for people that just need that intense, rich hydration when it comes to their face. And uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of how it felt. I'm not a fan of how it smells. I'm not a fan of what it did. It's like a gel. It's like a moisturizing gel. So when I think of an ultra hydrating moisturizer, I don't think gel. I think heavy cream. You know what I mean? Not, not whipping cream, not heavy whipping cream, although that is delicious, but like a thicker cream, not a whipped type gel formula. So that for me didn't give me the results. It didn't feel like it. It didn't uh, make me look some type of hydrated, amazing goddess the next morning, like the other one that I mentioned. So for me, that one's a pass. Um, and I'll, again, I'll talk about it probably in another video in more detail. Then we got this guy, and this is another one that I thought might be a good alternative. This is from First Aid Beauty, and you guys know I'm already a fan of this brand. The Ultra Repair Hydra Firm Night Cream. This is what the packaging looks like. And so when I use the Augustinus Bader, <laughs> my manicure, it matches. Do I have a chip nail? How is my nail chipped? I just did my nails yesterday. That's just rude. So this one, let me show you guys. 
This one has that luxurious, almost cold cream texture to it. Like that's what I want from my nighttime moisturizer. I want it to feel like a cold, like a cold cream. That like very rich, creamy, heavy in a good way type of moisturizer. Love it, love that there's no fragrance. I love the way it feels. My skin looked amazing in the morning. Am I there yet where I could say it's a suitable alternative? Not yet, I still wanna use it. Then, we got this obnoxious baby. So I got that fragrance set during the holidays, the Ulta one, where you try out all those little samples and then you have a coupon for $15 and then you exchange it. So this is what I exchanged my coupon for. So originally it was like 40 bucks and I got it for uh, 25. And here was my thing, is when I was telling you guys that I loved this perfume, I said, I just wish it didn't look so stupid. <laughs> If you like it, that's great. But for me having this on like my bathroom vanity, it's like, it's not my vibe. You know what I mean? It looks a little childish to me. And if you're a fan of Ariana and that's how you're getting it, I get it, you know? And if you're younger and you like how it smells and you like it, that's great. And if you like that it has a little stand, that's great. I didn't know it came off until you guys left me that comment. Now, once you remove this, this gives me like Marc Jacobs vibes. You know what I mean? That like classier, more sleek look with a little bit of fun to it still. Love this perfume. Totally different from what I normally use, but I've been really enjoying it. Now, if you've been wanting a suitable or close dupe for the cut, correct me if I'm wrong. So the Kayali fragrances at Sephora, is it Kayali or is it Kai Ali? Because in the packaging, it splits the name, but when you see the listing on the website, it's one word. I was like, I wonder if it's Kaya Lee, or is it Kaya Lee? Anyway, the sweet, juicy pear, sweet, juicy apple, the newest one, the red one. Oh my God, it smells amazing. It smells the same. It does have the longevity of like a more economic fragrance, but the other one, I mean that one, you launder your clothes and it still smells. It's so good. So I'm inclined to get the other one uh, soon after I use this one up because I got the little bottle of this one. So anyway, it has a very clean, powdery, <sighs> clean, powdery, dry down vanilla. I don't know who I think I am trying to describe a fragrance to you guys. The uh, website lists it as an oriental within the fragrance family, a oriental gourmand, and it has juicy pear, bergamot, cream de coconut, vanilla orchid, praline, sensual musk, and creamy blonde. I don't know. To me, it has like a powdery coconut, powdery vanilla, definitely a little bit of juicy pear but it's more of a fresh, girly, playful scent to me. So it would be a really great perfume for spring, summer, or like everyday casual. So I like it, but if you really want that lasting power, I would say bite the bullet and go with the more expensive version. Uh, who wants to talk about feet? A few vlogs ago, weekend vlogs ago, I ended the vlog and told you that I did a foot peel, and it was a foot peel that came in a kit that I got during the holidays. It was one of my stocking stuffers. Well, I've never had success with foot peels. Like you see people try baby foot and they shed an entire foot like a snake. Literally chunks of skin slough off. And I've seen it with my mom. I've seen it with friends of mine. They actually lose like mass when it comes to a foot peel. I have tried five or six different foot peels and that never happens to my feet. They get softer and they peel a little bit here or there. They get a little wrinkly and you could kind of just fluff off, slough off a little bit of, of, of the foot. But that peely chunkiness, that never happens. It didn't happen with this either, but it definitely gave me more results than any others that I've tried. So I think it's a combination of factors. I think it has to do with the current state of your feet, how long you leave it, how, um, what the acidic components are of the booties, et cetera, et cetera, maybe your showering habits. I wasn't looking for a dramatic peel effect. All I wanted was 
softer feet. That's all that I was looking for. So if they it didn't slough off in chunks, I was okay with that. Actually, I was probably better than okay with that, but I did want the softer feet. And I could say after almost three weeks of having tried it, I got the four pack from the Ulta site. So it's the, it's called the super fan edition because it's like a multi-pack. So if you've tried it before and you think, okay, this is awesome. I love how it works then you want to get the multi-pack. So I got the four pack. I thought it would be fun to have on hand. I don't know when Sam comes to visit in about a month, we could do it together. So I thought it would be fun. And I do appreciate that it's not that dramatic baby peel, baby foot peeling effect. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, well, we'll see with Sam's results or someone else, or if my mom comes to visit. Definitely didn't have that experience, but I can say that my feet are significantly softer since using it. The other thing that I wanted to use was the foot mask. So this is the opposite of this mask. This mask is going to remove dry skin, make your feet softer, you know, kind of uh, exfoliate, do the dirty labor. This one's just going to soften your feet. So it's like a deep moisturizing mask for your hair, but it's for your feet. It's a one pack. I've never heard of it before, and I think it's only available online, which is where I found it, because I think if I would have seen this in store, I probably would have tried it already. <laughs> so anyway, I'll have to report back on that. I haven't used that. And then I got some makeup. So I told you guys in this Get Ready With Me, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it. If it's not up yet, I'll link it eventually. That I used to be a huge fan of Milani powder products and I heard somewhere, someone left me a comment, there was a scare published somewhere where they said that all the baked powder blushes had carcinogens in them or an, an, an ingredient that caused cancer. And so I freaked out and I threw away all my Milani powder blushes. I was obsessed with those blushes, you guys. They're so good. The formula is perfection. And so I really wanted to replace Luminoso because I love the Too Faced Sweet Peach, Too Peach, whatever blush that comes in the metal tin. And this is actually a really, this is a better option than that one. I actually have it on today and I can't believe I forgot how good this product was. So it is a baked powder product. That's what it looks like. That was a hair. Let me see. I'll show you guys a swatch on my hand. Do you see how glowy and glistening it is? It is such a stunning color because even if you don't prefer to use highlight, this is almost like a highlighting blush. See it right there? So it's very glowy. You see how it shines against the light? It's peach, but it's very glowy. So it's not a very dramatic blush, unless you go ham sandwich like a friend here. And then I got the highlighter. I hadn't actually ever tried the Milani powder highlights, and this is in the shade Dolce Perla. Dolce Perla. So it's a very pretty, cool toned icy highlighter. I'm actually wearing it today so that I could show you as evidence. It's right there. It, that's not really like, can't really see it. I wonder if it's because of my lighting, but if you want a better look, it's what's on my face right now. So you see, it's not natural per se. I don't think there's really a natural highlighter unless you go the cream route, like a liquid or cream version, but it's more on the natural side of things because there's no chunkiness, there's no glitter to it. Super fan. Then I got this guy, which I thought was going to be a dupe for the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. This is from Revolution Pro, or Makeup Revolution. And when I tell you that it is exactly the same or a perfect dupe, I would be lying. But it is a significantly close enough dupe to replace the Milk Makeup one. So it comes in two sizes, just like the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. It has a twist up just like the Milk, uh, Milk Makeup Blur Stick. It has a twist cap just like the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. It performs exactly the same way. The only difference that I noticed is when layering it with other products, the texture feels different. Does it pill up? No, it doesn't do any of those things. It doesn't do anything nasty or disgusting. It doesn't interfere with your makeup. It's just a different sensation. That's it. But performance wise, it's totally the same. Then I got this guy. I haven't actually uh, opened it. This is gonna be a first impression and I'll just do a little swatch on my hand for you guys. But these are the new lipsticks from Milani. I'm not sure if they're limited edition, but they are insanely hard to get open. 
So these are the Milani, I don't know what they're called, but they're the newer lipsticks. Look at how cool the bullet is. Smells delicious. The shade Peony is the one that I got. And I'm gonna do a swatch. Of her. Oh God, that's gorgeous. Oh my God, that is stunning. Look at that. Peony, so Milani Peony. Look how beautiful that is. It reminds me of the Urban Decay Matte Formula where it's super slippery and buttery, but still matte. Oh, that kind of looks like Frida, doesn't it? Who knows what I'm talking about? Who knows what mom was talking about? That kind of reminds me of Frida. Are any of you guys like, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Where like you, you get something on your radar and then that's all you can think about or that's all you can focus on. It's almost like a hyper focus. So my hyper focus lately, despite the fact that I got bit by the makeup bug, is fragrance. And buying fragrance, but in like a smart way, not necessarily the full size of anything anymore. Because if you want variety, what's the point of getting a really big bottle when fragrance expires and you have to take care of it properly? And if you just really want variety, well, you might as well try variety in different ways and smaller packaging, right? So the first one was a fail for me just because I know better, like I know better and Victor and Rolf fragrances don't smell that good on me. And so the new Victor and Rolf Ruby Orchid perfume was like almost my last hope. I was like, if one is gonna work for me, it's gonna be this one. It doesn't work for me. It smells really pretty, but on me, it just smells so mature and it just, it's really upsetting. <laughs> it's really upsetting because Victor and Rolf smells so sexy on everyone. It makes them smell like sexy and intriguing and flirty and just so sensual and womanly. And I put it on and I smell like an 80 year old. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't vibe with my like chemistry or pH balance or whatever. And it, it's very upsetting. Okay. Then I told you guys in a previous vlog that I recently discovered Floral Street that has the best perfumes ever. I fell in love with this one. It's called Wonderland Peony. I'm like halfway through the bottle already. That's how much I loved it. Well, when I found out that they had eight fragrances within the collection and you could try them out for like 20 bucks, I was like, uh, yeah. So they have a rhubarb scent. They have a rose scent, Arizona Bloom, Wild Vanilla Orchid, Shipri Sh Sublime. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's probably a flower. Black Lotus. Liang Ling Espresso. And then when you kind of fold back a little bit, gosh, I hope I don't mess. So if you flip back on the packaging, it gives you a little description of like what it's gonna make you smell like. So for example, I like the peony one and it says that it's gonna make me smell delicate, dreamy, radiant, and thoughtful. But maybe I'm feeling fiery, quirky, striking, and expressive. Maybe gonna throw on that rose fragrance or Maybe I want to smell wild, feisty, rebellious, and intoxicating. That's Black Lotus. All right, let's see. Get ready to be intoxicated. Okay, that's not the vibe I was going for. Hold on. Oh! Sorry, you guys. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they meant intoxicated in like a different way. <laughs> like poisoned. <laughs> wow, oh my God, that does not smell pretty at all. Anyway, the point is the uh, wonderful peony is amazing and we're gonna discover the rest of these together. And then, same thing. So this is the Best of Vanilla Sephora Favorites. These kits are awesome. These Ulta kits, these Sephora kits, because you pay a specific price, you get certain amount of little samples in your, let me get my beautiful little scissors, thanks to one of my pandas. She was like, you have to keep them next to your camera. I was like, I promise. Look. <laughs> so you spend X amount of money and you get all of these little samples. So all of these samples are the same size as these and you kind of try them out, you play with them, you test them. The good thing about these samples is they give you enough for you to use them for a few days because I just put this on and I'm like, holy mackerel, it smells like, but 
maybe as it changes throughout the day, or maybe if I spray it on my actual skin, it's gonna give me a different scent. Like right now, it's already changing the way it smells. So once you try them all out and you find your favorite and you're like, that one's the one, you take this scent certificate to an Ulta store, it tells you what you can exchange it for. For example, the Juliet has a gun vanilla vibes, which I already own, but you could get the full size of it with this certificate card, like the big size. You could get the big size of the Floral Street Wild Vanilla Orchid, the 1.7 ounce. Actually, let's try that because we have it here. Where can I put this little McDaddy? All right. So this is the, what is it? Wild Vanilla Orchid? Wild Vanilla Orchid. And this is gonna make me smell bold, sassy, confident, and modernist. Ooh! Oh my God, that smells delicious. I'm glad I made up for that other one that I tried. I don't wanna smell intoxicated, incating, intoxicating. <laughs> I probably sound intoxicated. Ooh, that smells yum. Okay, I like that. So anyway, the certificate tells you what you can redeem it for. It'll be anything that's in this box, but a specific size. So let's say that all of these are misses for me. I could go and get a full size of the uh, Juliet Has a Gun, which is one I already know I love, you know? And then I got a bunch of these little samples. Anyway, I don't know why I always convince myself that these kits are amazing but they are. You know what is not? The way my sleeve smells. All right, all right, we are almost done, Matthew McConaughey. So, speaking of the Augustinus Bader uh, Rich Cream, I have three extra products that you guys told me I needed to get, which were going to be close enough dupes to the Rich Cream. The first one is the Dr. Jart Ceramidin Cream Moisture Retention Shield. This is pretty good, but you gotta get past the texture. Do you guys remember those dimethicone, really heavy dimethicone, nude colored primers, like those creamy nude primers that you put it on and you could tell you're spackling on a layer of primer. That's what this feels like. It makes my skin look amazing and feel amazing, but you gotta get, you just, you really gotta get past the texture and also consider that I don't think Dr. Jart is cruelty free. So the, <laughs> The instructions apply the appropriate amount on face so that's what the texture looks like so you could tell it's that really thick dimethicone feeling and so putting this on with the illusion that it's going to be a very moisturizing moisturizer it really feels almost like you're putting on a primer so it's a little bit of like an oxymoron or it feels a little bit like of a conflicting muscle memory you're like okay i'm gonna put on a very emollient moisturizer wait is that a primer so it's a very like mixed signals experience that's the experience i had with it and then a few of you guys said that the skin skin fix barrier plus triple lipid peptide cream was a good option and i have loved this thing in fact it totally replaced the lala retro from drunk elephant which you guys know i've been a fan of for years this stuff is awesome i would even be inclined to have one of the girls or even parker use this because of how so luxurious it feels on my skin and it has better products it's vegan and cruelty free and it doesn't have fragrance to it. So I loved this. So I really appreciate the recommendation. Whoever, a few of you told me about this one and so far I'm loving it. Am I at the point where I'm like, yeah, it's going to replace? Not yet, but this is still hurting my feelings. And then I got this guy, the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I got a little pot from Sephora as like a prize or reward or whatever. And I really liked it. I thought it made my skin feel like it just got enveloped in this refreshing glass of water. It was so hydrating. My skin looked like 17 year old skin. It was very dewy and moisturized, but it does have a learning curve. So with this moisturizer, like you really have to just put a little bit because holy mackerel, it can be, you can overdo it really fast. 
The reason that I wanted to try this as a dupe for the rich cream is because it has that rice complex in it. And that's actually what the rich cream has. So the rich cream has anti-aging properties because of like the hydrolyzed rice complex that it has. And this guy here has purple rice. So it's supposed to replenish hydration and be anti-aging for people with dry skin. Now, the fragrance is not synthetic, but it is very strong. So that's another thing that you gotta get used to. And you don't stick your fingers in the pot. You use a little spatula that it has on the top. And I do appreciate that it has a spot for it that is not inside the container like most things, which I think is so weird, right? So this is another option for the rich cream. Still on the fence, not really sure. Two more products and we are totally done. This one I talk about in this Get Ready With Me. It is a multi-purpose stick, so it's a foundation slash concealer. It's included in a five minute makeup look that Merit, the brand, features. This is a luxury brand, but it is like a cleaner, greener, air quotes, luxury brand. So it's listed under the like green tab when it comes to Sephora. Love their lip oil. It's gotten to the top of my favorites real quick. And in case you're wondering, I'm in the shade Bisque. It does not oxidize. So the color you see is the color it remains. I did set mine with a powder. That's what the packaging looks like. It is a twist up crayon. And like I said in that get ready with me, if you're trying to hide dark under eye circles or like really dark hyperpigmentation, this is probably not the route to go. This is more of like a touch up stick. So I went in with additional concealer on my under eyes and then I just did a thin layer everywhere else and set it with the powder. However, if I was gonna just go run errands and I kinda wanna put a little, wanna look a little put together, I always go in with spot concealer, cream blush, cream highlight and mascara and I think this would be a freaking phenomenal addition to a routine like that. So fan of this, big fan of that. Not a fan of where I am in the color spectrum because I think I lost like three different tan shades. It's a little offensive. And then I have the Makeup by Mario Moisturizing Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serum. This stuff is sold out everywhere. Every color, every style, every everything is sold out everywhere. The only color I was able to get my hands on is Apricot Glow, but I wanted the mauve shade. But you know what? I don't know if I waited for it for too long or it's been sold out for too long or maybe the novelty wore off or what it is. But once I got my hands on it, I was like, oh, that's it? The first complaint I have is the packaging is horrendous. It is a click twist. And once you click it, you can't shove the product back in. I could see why it's useful because the product itself is really soft. And if you could totally turn it up, it would probably collapse everywhere. So it needs to be really tight around the vessel. Don't like the packaging. The second complaint I have is that it is in insanely like minty, like old school tart products, I would say, like that really burny, minty sensation, but it's also a plumping product, so I can see that's probably why they do it. Um, but ultimately, it's a good product, but the hype around it is a little hard for me to, to understand. Here is a swatch of it. You can see, I mean, it's nice. It's pretty but is it really worth like the sold out hysteria around it? I don't think so. I think there are other balmy, lip shiny, plumping, gloss slash balms that you could get and find in stock. <laughs> but those are my two cents. What can I tell you? Except you need this. This, like right here, you need that in your life. And if you're looking for a great, great drugstore lipstick, this formula by Milani is amazing. And these lip products by the House Laboratories are awesome. I do love that they come in a bundle. Like when stuff comes in a bundle, I'm like, yes, do the thinking for me. This is why, this is why I love you, Lady Gaga, you know? <laughs>
Anyway, like any and all my vlogs, I will make sure to list and link all these products that I mentioned in the description box of this video. I do want to apologize to your wallet in advance if there's anything that you are inclined to purchase because of this video. But remember what I said at the beginning of this video. This is a safe zone. This is a place where we could share, we could talk, we can exchange without the fear of judgment. So if a few of these things accidentally jump into your cart, accidentally arrive at your doorstep, you accidentally pick them up at your local mall that's okay that's what we're here for this is this is this is the community that we exist in you know free of judgment free of harsh criticism we just we support one another so if you want to be house laboratory twins or you want to have this amazing sparkle on your lid or even your lips I'm here to support your dreams okay I love you guys so much and you know what to do if you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye guys. I'm literally the worst. <laughs> I'm the worst.